Does this vision really exist for the Lens Canal or are you also part of the end of the story from the Federal? Well, it's a part of a big discussion, but yes, there are community groups in Buenos who very much argue for the, mm -hmm. that position. And the Red Hook is more dispersed because there are not so many people living there. And there have been all kind of, a big problem for Red Hook in general is the uh, lack of transportation, which you have know, heard about. Um, there's no, it's not easy to get there. If you live there and you're middle class, probably you need a car. But then you have plenty of parking spots because <laughs> 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 you have to pay for the gas. <laughs> yeah, there's this kind of thing which they've tried, but there's not enough critical mass of people there to have real infrastructure yet. <coughs> so that's a big question how you jumpstart this thing. But it's sort of starting. There's, there's the, the, the agriculture folks that you see them. The, the, um, uh, yeah, the, the urban, urban agriculture. Urban agriculture. Mm -hmm. That's growing. That's very interesting because agriculture can be a piece of urban production. Um, there's the crazy guy who wants to put back the tram system. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Trams are, the cars are yeah. still sitting there. He's been nice. trying to do that for many mm -hmm. years. Uh, since long before IKEA came. Which is an interesting idea, but very hard to do for money or reasons. Yeah, there was a study about how it would cost, how much it would cost to reinstate the whole Yeah, yeah, to put the trash back. And yeah. Then, then Sunset Park, further down, is interesting because there, there's a lot of issues that could apply in, in Red Hook, except in Red Hook, there are not many people living. The Sunset Park is a a very strong community. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Hispanic, been there a long time. Did you go down there at all? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's the last working port. You spoke um, of the Arlington Territory. Yeah. And, and the question is whether any port activity in the renewal of the port will get up here. And that's a big open question. But, the, but that's something you guys might want to look at a little more in the research. So, Probably did enough research for <laughs> one project, but that that connects to changes in global shipping. So we have two big changes: it's the widening of the Panama Canal and, and the opening of the Arctic because of the ice melt. And so there's all kinds of planning going on for that behind the scenes. And the big question is, what will that mean for Port of New York and New Jersey? And what would it mean for Red Hook? Because one theory has it that um, the whole of the New York port will have less traffic because of shifts in the global shipping. Or this is a complicated thing. You can find this if you're interested. But it relates directly to your site. <coughs> um, and, and the major, major North American East Coast hub would be further south than Norfolk, Virginia, for that area. It's already a huge naval base. Uh, and then New York would become what would, would be what is called a feeder port. So if you Google feeder port, you'll find you know, Google some of this, you'll find some of some just the easy stuff. And it was, you know, steering it out. If New York becomes more of a feeder port, probably. Uh, there, there will be good reason to deliver directly to the New York City side rather than the New Jersey side. There's a whole theory that there will be much more use of smaller containers. So this, the question of bigger and bigger containers and bigger and bigger ships uh, doesn't, won't really apply for feeder ports. So, so if you follow that scenario, then Parts of Brooklyn Waterfront would re reemerge. Yes. Working waterfront. Right. Yes. yes. And, the, and the big the big controversy in which this was discussed was uh, where the Brooklyn Bridge comes in. Brooklyn mm Bridge -hmm. Park. Just Park. those warehouses just below the promenade. Mm -hmm. Where is it? The ones that are being destroyed? Well, apparently, I don't know if this. Yes, this here. 
Huge opposition to removing that, saying, okay, so then what? You know, because that was working until pretty recently. It doesn't look like that it was. I mean, the fact that may still be a room that there should be activity here even now. So, so that's a, an interesting whole speculation. Uh, officially, Bloomberg, the mayor, the city, they don't like to hear about this. Their, their vision of the city is. Is more on the condo side. Public space. You know, plant grass and sell for a high price. But you know, the whole housing thing is is going down the toilet. So you know, it's hard to. It's getting harder and harder for them not to think about a different picture of the city than just finance and real estate. I mean, city economy has been. It was like the. You know, Managing bankers or something, you know, they, they've been passing papers around for 50 years and getting rid of, <laughs> of actual spatial infrastructure. But, you know, so, so the question is whether that stopped at the end or not. Now, if you go on the Sunset Park website, and they're called what? Elizabeth Young Pierre is the head of the group that's oh, the community center. Com com no, what's it called? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, but you look it up. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. yeah. You'll find lots of arguments that they're making for having a combination of productive waterfront and community together. And and there are they argue that they must still might be on their website. Elizabeth Y A M P I E R R E. Very interesting to have those kind of, kind of that. Um, look up Sunset Park and you'll find it. <clears throat> but their argument was, that gets to the spatial issues, was that um, rather than the strategy of the city, which tends to be just to create linear green waterfront, that, that there needs to be another model which will alternate uses and connects back in. To make the long story short. So that, I'm that going to be part This is very short. The community scale, no, no. Really they, were, scale. they were already talking about should it be some um, <coughs> greenway, as they call it, right? There's a greenway thing. Mm -hmm. Should it, it not be like this new thing around it? But maybe also pass Well, that's, that's exactly the argument. And they, they have <coughs> they've done plans, and I don't know, I mean, also schools. The question is, can, can you have like shipping and then recreation or connections back in the community or shipping housing? You know, what, what can be done on this axis rather than just thinking about the budget itself? So, so Aren't they like right now building or design in some support for like a science center? There's some stuff going projects. on there, yeah. But the last huge um, warehouse is there. So, so that that was like the tipping point. They couldn't really argue to close that down because it was working. And I think that's starting to, to have more and more business. You know. So, so this is this is like you're right in the middle of a debate on this whole waterfront thing. Waterfront production, and of course, green production, green city. Um, you know. But we think that now the development of the workforce in Redwood is slowed down by a lack of transit because the vision oh, yeah. of Bloomberg is a transit-oriented region. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it can't happen. They won't do it if there is nothing. They won't, they won't the problem is getting, getting workers, whatever a worker is now, getting them to the edge. So right now, hopefully, not hopefully, Fairway and IKEA. Fairway, especially, people drive there in Brooklyn on weekends to buy cheap food, right? well, cheap pieces of food. Um, but they're driving there. I mean, to get there any other way is a huge hassle. So, and and you could probably imagine the same thing for anything else that required people to to go from somewhere else to go there. Fair, Ikea is the same, but they have 
buses and you know water water taxi. taxi and stuff. So they tried to. to uh, but that's that's a bad edge for the. You know, yeah. Not, not fundamental. The water tax is only it's a marketing device. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, you get a a water ride and buy your light bulbs. It's a kind of deal. Yeah, we noted also that the city, like transportation is IKEA, sort transportation, but the city isn't investing in the area. It seems like it's doing the land banking yeah. for us, because they don't do, well, they zone it as a neutral and they want to have jobs there, or, or they see it, mm -hmm. but they don't invest in anything. Zoning is a big issue, because most of these areas are still in manufacturing. And the minute, everybody knows the minute they change that, the game is lost. So there's huge, of course, there's huge pressure to rezone because of the developers who want to build residential, high-end residential. And then there's the, the other folks who are basically interested in having a job somewhere and say, well, you know, how much more of this stuff do we have? We're, we're not changing this for manufacturing until we have some guarantees <laughs> that, you know, that we'll, we'll still be able to live in this place, right? So that's, that's the basic debate. So on the Gowanus side, yeah, Toll Brothers project was stopped through because it wasn't rezoned in the end. And then it, that was the first, the first bullet. And then the second bullet was super fun, but the federal government said, stop talking about this nonsense more. Possibly later, anyway. <laughs> so that's that's what's going on with the zone. So the, the waterfront is still a concern for the government. It's not that because of the economical crisis that they keep it like industrial to land bank it to to decline the property value. It's it's really a case of a concern for the waterfront. No, no. It's just that there's no. It's not in the red hook case. It's not really practical to because develop it to because of. Provide. Basically, because there's no transportation no, infrastructure. Yeah. And because it's again the economic crisis, they can invest in that. So, isn't it a good thing that there is that it's not? Uh, that there isn't any infrastructure. It can be a good thing. Sure. Yes. For now, it is. That's why it's still complicated. And also, since the strength of the future. The economic crisis is also a good thing. <laughs> but because it gives a little time to plan, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to. Oh, yeah. And you think the government is more likes to accept uh, alternatives to private It's development? all local. It's, it's, we'll have a new mayor in a year. Mm -hmm. He's going to change it. That's going <laughs> to could be worse. But the present mayor, who's not stupid and has done some good things, um, his whole formation and his billions of dollars came out of media and all the way to Stuff. So he, you know, that's what he understands. Plus, he's very impatient, so he doesn't want to hear about anything else. Um, but that that may change. It also may change the necessity because it uh, obviously Wall Street isn't going anywhere. Wall Street is the general term, but the, the the official term was the fire finance, insurance, and real estate which is books written on, of course. Which you, you could look at, uh, if you're interested in this industrial thing, look at, what's the thing, Bob Fitch's book, Assassination of New York, and then there's a couple of new ones, which, which describe how New York, by policy, removed all of its industrial production. To the as policies. They moved it first around, it moved around the U.S. and now it's all in Asia, so, you know, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's far away. Uh, so, and, and replaced it with the finance industry, that is insurance, real estate, um, and finance, and con of course concentrated in Wall Street. So the city economy survived on that until the bubble burst. So, so now you're in the middle. Your site is in the middle of a huge, big discussion 